Welcome to Community Voice. Community Voices is all about talking to broad range to many communities. And today I have the wonderful presence to have with me Susan Newstrom. Welcome, Susan. Welcome. I'm glad to be here. Thank you. I'm really happy to have you with me. And I'm really happy because you have wonderful conversations about leadership that you talk about, and your company is actually called Leading to Action. So that's what we're going to be talking about today. So I would love for you to share with the audience, how did you come up with a title for your business called Leading to Action? Well, it, it, for me, it was a combination of leadership and taking action. And, and what led me to that is, for, for many organizations, strategy is number one, is concentrating on the strategy. What do I need to do? What do I need to do? Um, but really, strategy is only a plan. You need action. You need steps. You need the how-to. And the how-to is where, what gets you where you need to go. So when you are a leader, you need to take everyone to action. And so that is the basis of my company. And I know you work with various different types of companies. You work with for-profit and non-profit, or do you mostly focus on non-profits? Um, for the consulting, I work with nonprofits. For coaching, I work with nonprofits and for profits also, and individuals. What would you say are the biggest components for, um, so I, for with your interview, I'd love to focus on leadership and then the components of, like you said, leading to action. So for you, what would you say are one of the biggest components to being a good leader? Well, for sure, when you look at leadership, many people think of leaders. But when you think of leadership as, as an action, you understand that we are all leaders. And therefore, the skills that one possesses are the skills that everyone has, whether or not someone wants to take that role or not. And therefore, uh, leadership in itself is skills that we all possess. And bringing that out, a true leader will continue to bring out those skills in everyone so that an organization has not only a leader, but leaders throughout. So I would love for you actually to describe some of the attributes of a leader. So what are actually some of the words that you would attribute to being a leader? Oh, definitely um, integrity. Uh, having, uh, being able to influence, have impact, uh, understand others, have compassion, and be able to understand values, uh, both the, yours and others. And there would be some traits that you would say would be now leading towards action. Um, it, is, it is understanding the readiness of followers, understanding where people are at. It's great to take action, but unless you have someone following you, you're not going anywhere. <laughs> and so it is understanding where, where is everyone at. Leading means change. And when you, it, you experience change, often many are resistant. And so how do you get that by and how do you motivate people to embrace that change and move forward? And that's one of the biggest challenges of being a leader and having those leadership skills. How do you do that? And so understanding where someone is at, what those resistant pieces may be, and being able to address that is the beginning of moving in the direction that you want to go. So you brought up a very key word right there, change and the buy-in. Yes. So what are some tips and tools that you can say, that you can give to the audience, and how do you get the buy-in on change? Because that's a big one. It yeah. takes change to get growth in any company, and not just companies, mm -hmm. in life. Yes. So what are some tips and tools you can give to people to get people to buy into change? Well, when you craft a vision, uh, most leaders will have a really, really great vision. You need to articulate that vision as being something that offers hope, 
that offers uh, a new way to look at things. Uh, uh, gives uh, an advantage over what is presently known and that vision has to be crystal clear. It cannot be vague. It has to have steps leading to where it need, you need to go and you have to continuously support individuals that are working with you in order to create that change and it having letting everyone have a voice and, and being able to not only uh, lead, but also follow. Well, let's expand upon that, though, because I think change is, is a really big piece. So what are some additional tips you can give on change? I think change is a critical piece. Uh, when when you're, you initiate change, you introduce change, the first thing that's going to probably happen is resistance. And so that resistance needs to be addressed. You need to listen. Listen very closely to what are some of those reservations, what are some of those doubts, what are some of those fears. And that fear is what is leaving your comfort zone. It is walking away from what is known to the unknown. And in order to follow that path, to go to the unknown, you need support. You need a nice soft cushion to land on as you are entering into, into the unknown. So, so for a leader, it means creating small steps, celebrating success, and, and walking along, not in front of those that are making the, that, those changes. And I agree with that. A lot of people are afraid to take baby steps. They want to take leaps and bounds. Oh, yes, yes. Exactly. We're, we all want to take those huge mm -hmm. strides. Mm -hmm. And I agree in a company, sometimes taking small steps and celebrating those small successes then enables you to then take those larger and larger steps so that, again, is as they see small successes and their confidence mm -hmm. is building, then you can take those bigger and bigger steps. Yes. So I, I think that really is a critical component to showing that, hey, we can have these victories, then we can have these bigger and bigger victories. But to automatically go in and accept the apple cart, if you will, can create dissension, if you will. Exactly. Another component of change is definitely creating a new story. When you exist in an environment that has not changed, you have a story. You now have to create a new story, and creating that new story is really uh, a, a critical component of change. What will that story look like as we change? And as everyone embraces that story, they become closer and closer to making that change happen. And that story is, is part of the fabric of that change. It is how it is woven into where people move to. And that story is very, very important. That's another great thing you just brought up. I find getting your team involved in the story. So it's great if you create a story, but you also have to get your whole team involved in the story. And that means having these meetings and having allowing the team to be involved in the story. Oh, so so yes. offering, having meetings and having brainstorming and letting people be involved in the new storytelling. Yes. So do you have any suggestions to add to the story? Do you have any comments on the story? Do you have any suggestions on changing the story a little bit? In other words, obviously, as you the CEO or the owner of the company or the creator of the story, you want to get your members, your team members involved in the story. So maybe they may have a minor tweak, and you may have to go, okay, I can see that. I can see it's adding a little bit to that story. So making them feel like they're involved in the incorporation of the story. They're yes. not feeling left out in the sides, if you will, or left out in the dust of the sides of the story. So the more you get, your, more you get involved, your team members, in the story, in the change, they're going to be more bought into the change of the company into the, like as if they were the creators of the story, yeah. if you will. Then if you just come in and go, okay, here's the change, here's a new story, and if you don't like it, leave. <laughs> right. right. Right? 
So get them involved in the, in the change. Get them involved in the new story. Get them involved in letting them feel as if they were the creators of the story. Yes. As participatories yeah. of the change in the story. And along with the story, what well, uh, a good thing is to add a, a ritual, uh, a prop, a, a f an element of fun uh, that becomes that becomes part of that story. It is uh, a way to bring the past to the present and into the future, because many times that change, that resistance to change, occurs when people do not want to separate from that story. There are many good things that occur. That story is, is part of who they are. And so understanding the good parts, what works well, and bringing it into the present and into the future really, really enhances that story. It allows someone to hang on to the good things and to walk away from what's not working. I, I use the, the metaphor of when you buy a, buy a new house, you have to take what the, the, the memories from the old house, you have to throw out things that no longer fit, and then you also are going to purchase new things for your new house. And so when you move into your house, you have your memories that you hold on to, your, you have brand new items to, to use in your house, but then the things that no longer fit get discarded. That's what change looks like. Exactly. Or what about the old wise tale where it's like you don't throw the baby out with the bathwater? Right. Like, you know, exactly. There, there are some things that you are going to want to bring with the company into your new model. Yes. You are going to want to bring the things that really did work really, really well. Yes. And then there are some things that you know are outdated, no longer serve, and are not helping your company grow. Right. And then you're going to want to take in some of the new technologies that are still growing and technologies that are going to take you into the future. Yes. And you're going to want to bring those along with you. Exactly. So yes, obviously you want to take a little bit of the old and bring it with you. And then you're going to want to take something of the present. And then you're going to want to start growing with the new things that are going to take you into the future. And with that, we have to have the open mind to be open to seeing those things. Yeah. So a lot of times we have these, you know, horse blinders on, right? Mm -hmm. we, we don't want to see what's out there. We're, we're so comfortable, as we call it, in the, like you said, in this little box, in this little comfort zone. We yeah. don't want to grow because we're in the status quo of what's comfortable. Exactly. So we have to be willing to also be put out of our comfort zone to grow. Yes. So I think that's, that is a, it is a great analogy of the house because it is really true. Some things that we really hold dear and they, they, they give us warm fuzzies and uh -huh. you know, it's like, oh, that feels so great. I love the way things used to be and yet in order to grow, we have to be willing to let go of some of it, take yes. some of that really did make us grow and then be willing to be open enough to see what's going to take us to the next place in order to grow our company more. It, yeah. You know, that is if we want it. Not again, that's a choice. Do we want to grow? Yes. Right? Yeah. That's a choice. We don't have to, but it's a choice. Yes. And, and many times when you look at growth, uh, you consider it to be enlarging, uh, doing more than you've done before. Growth not, does not necessarily mean that. It can mean enhancing of services and products. It can mean increasing technology. It, it can mean um, doing something different than we've done before, but not necessarily increase in size. And for many organizations, uh, immediately that's the only definition of growth. But growth encompasses much, much more. And, and so identifying what growth means to each individual it, it, within the company will help to create a, a much better change process. Exactly. I agree with that. So why don't you talk a little bit about your business and how you work with clients and or businesses. I know you work with individuals and you work with companies. So why don't you talk a little bit and how you work with people and what your company offers. Okay. Um, and Leading to Action uh, works with not-for-profits on um, HR uh, issues capacity building, meaning where is the gap 
in what what I'm what you're doing is there is there something that's preventing the company from moving forward from uh, creating the change that that's necessary looking at talent development how do I grow my people uh, what happens I also work with individuals in coaching uh, both in, uh, leadership coaching, life coaching, and business coaching. And that is a one-on-one -on -one, uh, activity that if you're ready to move to the next level in your life, in your leadership, in your business, I work with you to uh, find that purpose, find uh, a way, and, and achieve your goals. And where can people find you? Because this also is a podcast. So where can people find you? Okay. Um, you can find me on, uh, do you want me to give the website? Yes. Okay. Okay. Uh, it is www.leadingtoaction.com. Um, you can also read my blog, which is www.susannewstrom.com. And what are, there some, what are some valuable tips you'd like to leave the audience with? One of the one of the tips that uh, I would like to leave the audience with is that all of us possess leadership skills. And one of the theories there's there's many many theories on leadership, but one of the theories that I truly believe in, I live, and I see other leaders living this theory. It is I call it the follow to lead theory, and it contains the four whys of leadership. And to be a leader, you need to understand your values, your passion, your patterns, and your purpose. And we all possess that. How do I find that? How do I lead from that? Those four whys, once, once you discover that, you discover your true purpose of leadership. Well, I thank you so much for joining me. It's thank been a you. delight having you. And I look forward to having many more conversations with you. And it's just been a joy to have you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much. For everybody out there, um, you've been on Community Voices with your host, Carly Lissa Thorne. And you can find me at carlylissathorne.com. I will be putting together a blog post with all of Susan's information where you can find her websites and her blog and all of her social media information as well. I wish you all out there a wonderful evening and for tonight it is good night. I always love bringing you valuable content and enjoy your evening. <laughs>